point tonight. The only thing, literally the only thing worse than China stealing all of our technology is us giving it to them. And that is exactly what we are doing. It's stunning. In fact, we didn't believe it when we first read it. This isn't just any technology. It's breakthrough battery technology that can change the way the world deals with energy. Remember, green energy is everything these days. President Biden says it's the future. We're going to spend hundreds upon hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars of your money that we don't have in order to invest in green energy. So giving the Chinese our best battery technology is akin to giving the Soviets our best microchip and computer technology back in the 1970s. Unthinkable, but here it is. A blockbuster NPR report shows America under the Trump administration giving China the best of the best American battery technology. The U.S. made a breakthrough battery discovery, then gave the technology to China. That's from NPR. The Biden administration now proposes, of course, spending hundreds of billions of dollars to subsidize, buying, among other things, batteries from China. What are we talking about? This is a picture of the batteries from back in 2015. They've since gotten a lot smaller. They were made by an American company called Uni Energy. They were developed by American scientists with taxpayer money from Washington State, American through and through. And these batteries literally will change the world. Here's how NPR describes the situation. They were building a battery, a Vandium Redux Flow battery, based on a design created by two dozen U.S. scientists at a government lab. The batteries were about the size of a refrigerator, held enough power and enough energy to power a house and could be used for decades. Again, this is huge. The engineers pictured people plunking them down next to their air conditioners, attaching them solar panels, and everybody living happily ever after off the grid. Okay, it sounds like science fiction. This was beyond promise, though, says Chris Howard, one of the engineers who worked there for a U.S. company called Uni Energy. We were seeing it function as designed as expected. Again, think about this. A battery the size of a refrigerator able to power a house that lasts 30 years. We did it. And the Department of Energy under President Trump leased the technology to China, and then the Department of Energy under President Biden transferred that technology to China fully. In 2017, Rick Perry ran DOE. He's the former Republican governor of Texas. 2021, Jennifer Granholm ran the DOD, DOE. She is the former governor of Michigan. Their combined incompetence, perhaps incompetence at best, means the game changer in clean energy isn't made in America, is no longer made by Americans. Specifically, they're not made in Washington state where it was proposed, but rather in China, 5,200 miles away. Think about the battery. Size of a fridge can power a house used for decades, recharged with solar. Again, the Chinese didn't steal this technology. We willingly gave it to them. It is the same kind of technology that just, just might. Maybe this technology could be useful in a war. Troops fighting that war could use these batteries rather than needing resupply of diesel fuel for generators. Who has that technology now? Who's been able to improve on it? The Chinese. Nancy Pelosi left Taiwan a few hours ago after meeting with the country's president. As we predicted, the Chinese didn't shoot her plane down or otherwise harass American forces. But right now, China's military surrounds Taiwan, and for the next six days, it's going to conduct live fire drills. We're coming over to the map to show you what that means strategically. 90% of the world's advanced microchips come from the democratic enclave here, 100 miles off the China coast. These are the live fire exercises. So China has all of Taiwan surrounded. They can economically cut this country off. For China, economic warfare and real warfare go hand in hand. As Clausewitz would say, war is politics by other means. The Chinese don't have to invade Taiwan. They can surround it, cut it off economically, and either force the United States into a war or force Taiwan to simply give up. So where is America in all this and why does this all matter? I want you to look very closely at all of these dots here 
around Taiwan. These are all islands, islands that batteries, among other things, would work wonders on. Speaking of the United States, USS Ronald Reagan here off of the Philippines, this is the South China Sea where one quarter of the world's commerce goes through every single day. Much of it then goes up through the Straits of Taiwan. Here's U.S. forces in Korea and then up farther in Japan as well. What's down here in the South China Sea where the U.S. Navy and the Chinese Navy would square off? thousands of islands, the Spratly Islands, exactly the same type of islands where that technology, where batteries, would be extraordinarily useful. Of course, under President Xi, China views the People's Liberation Army, the Communist Party, and every business in China as one big happy family. He is their commander-in-chief, essentially. He is also the CEO of China, Inc. China, as we have reported, has stolen so much of our best technology to make their own airliners, their own night vision gear, their own fighter planes, they've developed drugs, they've built weapon systems. But in this case, so, China doesn't actually have to win a war against America. Well, when it comes to the batteries, we're just letting them win the economic war. Remember, game-changing technology, batteries that can change the energy dynamic across the globe, and America, under both President Trump and Biden, surrendered without firing a shot. That's on point tonight. Craig Jones is here, CEO and chairperson of Forever Energy, CEO, chairman of the board of Strategic One Limited, who wanted to make the batteries until we gave the technology to China. Uh, Craig, I am not a battery expert, uh, and I don't play one on TV. Tell me if I got anything wrong in how we just laid this out. You mostly got it right. Thank you for inviting me. So it's called a mixed acid vanadium flow battery, and it is the battery of the future. This battery uh, chemistry never degrades, and that has been proven uh, scientifically. And we can make this entire battery in Shreveport, Louisiana. We don't need to rely on any supply chain from China. And we think now that the DOE knows about the story through NPR and through you, that uh, they'll do the right thing. We, we think now that uh, everybody knows that uh, it's time to do the right thing and let the people of Shreveport manufacture this battery. Well, right, but we just gave all the technology to China. So as much as I want you to do well in business from a, from a national security standpoint, it's sort of like we gave the nuclear bomb to the Russians and said, okay, but we're going to also make our own. Well, the company that uh, took the technology, so patents and things like that still rest with the United States government. The issue is, is that the company that licensed the technology from the United States government, that Uni Energy Technology, rather than opening a factory per their contract, their license contract, they opened factories in China. That was wrong. That was uh, an anthem to what the contract said. There was no requirement for Chinese factories. There was a requirement for U.S. factories, and they purposely didn't open U.S. factories. Right, but, but, we but can, the Chinese... We have the the Chinese now have this technology either way, though, right? Like, they're not going to give it back. We know that. Well, it's true. They won't give it back. But we can make our own batteries. And actually, the factories we would have in Shreveport can beat the Chinese at it. We can leapfrog their technology. Because actually, the company that uh, built those two factories, they're not operated very well. And so with U.S. government engineering or U.S. Uh, company engineering and our know-how, we can actually take this to the next level from a manufacturing standpoint, and we can have a mm. world-class factory that can not only make batteries for the U.S. economy, but can make batteries for all over. We can export batteries from that Shreveport facility. So you, you, everything's you not this, lost, Leland. Yeah, you, you make you make this great this great case, and obviously you, you've got a reason to because you want to open up sure. a, a factory in Shreveport, Louisiana. I have no reason to doubt you, though. But th this is what I find curious. Why on earth would the Department of Energy, the United States Department of Energy, have withheld the licenses from you and not certainly revoked and punished this company that's doing it in China? I don't get it. Well, you're, you're making good points, and the story is not written yet. Let's okay. see what happens over the next several weeks, months. But, but still, but um, just so we understand, there was a time that you all were asking to do this in America. Uni Energy had already the, violated their contracts, and DOE was siding with the company that had violated their contracts 
in taking the technology to China? Well, more specifically, one of the national labs that the Department of Energy is the beneficial owner. So the Department of Energy is a very big organization. So it was actually specifically one of the national labs. But like we said, we think that with this issue being brought to the light of day from shows like yours and the NPR, that the DOE now is going to see the light and they're going to do the right thing. We're, we trust in the DOE that they're going to do the right thing and yeah, issue hats licenses off, and support U.S. manufacturers. Hats off to NPR for, for bringing this up. I, I just want to real quick get you um, on Jennifer Granholm and then also Rick Perry, who bipartisan issue, right, because one was a Democrat nominee, one was a Republican nominee. Do you think they really understood what was happening here, or is this just some huge federal bureaucracy and these things happen? Or should we believe that at some lab, there's people who are a little bit favorable to the Chinese? I think these are lab issues. In fact, the NPR story touches on that. I think there's serious uh, commercialization issues within the labs that needs to be looked at. And I think the DOE uh, has already written reports, or the uh, general accounting office or other auditing wow. of the federal government has already initiated that commercialization within the labs, uh, mm -hmm. they're developing world-class technology like this mixed acid vanadium flow battery, but the commercialization of it and the licensing of it is really subpar. And they wow. need to really focus on this. Well, and they've and, got an opportunity in this to, uh, to, to fix make, it. Well, to make it right. They also have a, a responsibility not to give it to people who give it to the Chinese. But unbelievable. Hey, I, I, know, I know you got you, some, uh, some business ahead of you that you guys are trying to do with the DOE. I understand. Um, let us come down and visit uh, Shreveport when you get it opened, all right? Looking forward to that. Yeah, It'd thank be you. terrific. We, we appreciate yeah, it. Good you. talking to you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.